Hello everyone, I hope you're doing really good. We have a very nice project today and we're going to paint a pink calla lily. The reason I chose this is because I, a while back I painted a white calla lily and it's been my most popular video. So I thought maybe there's different color lilies and it turns out there are. Okay, so we're, let's look at our image that we're going to paint and here it is right here. Let's start. Here's our color selection. We have titanium white, dioxazine purple, alizarin crimson, thalo red rose. This color you will probably not find in, I'm, I'm using it in uh, Liquitex oil, medium magenta. Well, they don't make this color anymore in fact, Liquitex doesn't make any oils anymore, so it's a, it's a leftover paint. Um, but I'm sure there's some other brands that make a very similar color, but it's just beautiful. Okay, over here we have cadmium red, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow medium. This one is leaf green by Shiva. Cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, and I might use some phthalo blue also. Let's go ahead and make some of the colors. Um, I'll do this in the speed painting because it really takes incredibly long time for me to mix the colors. our basic color selection I'm going to mainly paint the flower itself the stem and the um, leaf on the side I can do separately but we'll concentrate on this video we'll concentrate on the flower itself we are ready to begin let's see here some of the brushes I'll probably be using liner brush the long thin brush, um, some of the small rounds, and some of the small flats. I'll go ahead and start at the top. The top here, we have uh, a little bit of pink and pink with yellow. And a little bit of edging. Okay, we have a little bit of a light edge here. We'll continue, move along.
Sometimes I add a little bit of thinner if I want the paint to stretch a little bit more if I think it's, it's just a little too thick. Now here I'll go ahead and cover an area and then we'll go back with the detail. Right at the base here, we have a strong pink. And this fold also. Stronger pink. Look at our shadow here. As it turns, we have a shadow. Let's see, I'll use a flat brush just to flatten this area a little bit, smooth it out. Okay, we know we have a light up here. The light darkens it, so it makes a turn. Let's try out some of the detail. For some of the detail, I'll get one of the darker pinks and um, add a little bit of thinner to it so that it will flow well. I barely touch it. What I'm doing here is putting, I guess where there's tiny little folds or lines, it's preceded by a shadow. But then on the opposite side of the shadow, we also have highlight, so let's put that highlight in. And the same thing, I'm, I'm taking my lightest color, adding a little bit of thinner to it, to it, and I'll put it over here.
on the right side. Whereas we have this shadow over here, we have some, some more light hitting this area. So let's put that in. The light continues down into this area. Let's darken our shadow up here a little bit. Just a little more. All right, I guess before we continue um, further down, we'll take care of this little area. But I want to add just a touch more shadow up here. And the reason why is that then we, it gives the impression that it's folding over. Here we go. All right, let's take care of the section down here. For that, we start off with a darker, um, it's kind of a, a lizard and purple color. It's casting a shadow. This area is casting a shadow over here. Okay, let's soften that by pulling it. Pull, 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 pull. Okay, we softened it. Let's continue. Right here on the edge, the red is just a little warmer. There's a little bit of touch of, of um, yellow in it, the red. Most of these are cool reds, and this one is a warm red.
So if you've watched my videos before, you, you know that I premix the colors, the basic colors. That doesn't mean that from then on I will not mix anymore. But basically what I do, <clears throat> let's just show you real quick. Basically what I do at this point now that I have my colors is I'll intermix depending on what I need. Do I need to lighten this, darken it? Do I need to make this more intense? Like I took this color earlier and I put this color with it right here just to make it a little warmer. So I play around with them. It's not as if for sure I'm going to use this perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. But it saves a lot of time to do it this way. Let's see, do we have highlights in this section? Yes, we do. A little bit right there. A little bit towards the center here. Center. Center. Now we will soften that area just a little bit. So I clean off my brush. Just barely touch it and pull. See, I soften that edge where the shadow was. Since this area is behind this area, so it's a little softer in general. By softening it, it pushes it back. Also soften the edge. All right, let's continue. This time I will use a flat brush to continue my movement around. I think I'll stop there on this part because here we're going to have a lot of light and here it starts getting into the shadows. So let's smooth out our what we've done up to this point. I'm doing these little lines because it'll help with the transition later. And here I'm going to lift a little color. I put too much of the medium pink here. I'm going to lift a little bit. Take some off, in other words. Okay, what do I need to do? Carry our shadow around. Start to see a little shadow over here too. Some purples.
Let's put in our highlight on the left side. <clears throat> Oops, I did a little mess up. Let's clean it up. Everybody messes up. That's okay. Now you can see how we erase. Take your brush, put a little linse put a little linseed or thinner on it. Be almost dry it off. Go over the area, and it absorbs. It absorbs your mistake. There's an interesting color right about here. Um, the color starts to darken. But also there's a touch of the color is not as in, as intense anymore. The next step we're going to do is, you notice, I don't know if you remember, I put a, a little dark edge there. It's because we have a lot of light right here. Very pretty light. Here, um, to get the effect I want, I'm doing this with the brush, going up and down. Continue that same thing right over in this area. As well as this area.
All right, let's do continue our lines. We have our lines up here, but we don't have them down here. So we will continue them. Here's one that enters up here, makes a circle. Down this way. This one we connect. We're moving right along, aren't we? Here we have a little bit of shadow as the pedal makes a turn. And also down here. Sorry about the dog barking. It's this dog next door that just barks and barks sometimes. And you'd never know when he's gonna bark, so. He's not my dog and I can't control him. Okay, now that we have our lines there, we're going to do like previously, and we will start um, adding highlights to them. When you're doing things like what I'm doing right now, the fine lines, you have to really have a good brush. If you have a brush that is already frayed, it's opening up, then it's not going to work. It's going to fight you and fight you. It looks like there's some extra little veins too. We can go ahead and do those. Good. OK, 
Okay, we're going to start moving further down. I'm going to start introducing the yellow a little bit. Yellow, pinks, and greens going downward. It's just fantastic to work with colors, isn't it? I have a stronger green here. Starting to transition. Don't be scared of color. Sometimes when we're scared of color, we don't experiment enough. So we think we're gonna ruin everything. But it's just color. It's just pigment, nothing bad's gonna happen. See where it's starting to get darker too. Now you might wonder, how can I put so many colors on here? Well, it's because I don't, it may look like I'm putting a lot of color. I'm not talking about Different colors, what I'm talking about. I'm not putting a lot of quantity. It's not that thick. Let's see, this area right here has shadows. I'll use some of the purples and yellows. You know what happens when you put purple and yellow together, right? It starts to muddy a little bit. And I'm doing it intentionally. That's right. Sometimes you hear, you know, people talk negatively about muddy colors. There's nothing wrong with muddy colors. You just need to control them. Use them at the right time. 
looks like we need some to continue the lines just a little bit more downward. So I'm going to turn the image so it just be easier on, my, on the direction of my hand. So let's put on our highlight. Let's see, that one may be a really light green. I made a very light green and I put a little bit of uh, thinner in it. Start down here. Nope, don't like it. I'll go more blue. More light blue. Kind of like a blue green, really. We are ready to move on to the left side. Mm -hmm. You know, I might do this because I see it in the photograph. Is It seems to have a few of these little tiny, I don't know what they're called, the tiny, tiny little spots. So I'm barely touching it with, with green. Mm -hmm. And then the same with the uh, the purples, just a little bit of purple dots here. Touching up and down, some closer, some further, very irregular. It's just a little extra something there. All right, let's move on over here. For that, we use a lot of pinks and purples. Pinks and purples. Put our light here. Now this area also is further back, so we will need to make it just a little fuzzy.
same with the itch. Soften the edge. Okay, over here. Um, right up against here, we have our darkest area of the whole painting, besides the background. Give it a little curve. Beautiful little purples right there. Transition color. Sometimes you might think, well, how does this guy do this? You know, it's not like I'm so confident that I always think, oh, it's going to come out perfect. I'm not. Sometimes I think, is it even going to come out? Am I going to have to refilm it? It's not like I'm fully confident. But I've done it a lot of years, so I kind of know what I'm after and, and how to get there. All right, let's do a little blending. I dry off my brush and we'll start pulling some of these colors. Let's soften this, for example. Yes, I said we needed to soften the edge of this area, just like over there. Today I am very, very messy. I'm sorry about that. I really think it's because I don't have the appropriate chair. I'm so low. Well, 
I think that's it. Now the rest I will do in speed painting. But uh, basically that's it. And I hope you enjoyed our little time together. And you can uh, take or incorporate something for your artwork. Thank you so much. That's it, our beautiful pink calla lily. I hope I explained it well enough. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Also, if you would like to see more of my artwork, check the link below. Ciao!